something is happening in Hobbs, New Mexico right now. I can see it right now, it's happening. This is a miracle taking place. They're from Hobbs, New Mexico. There's a miracle happening. There's a miracle happening in Hobbs. Amen. Hallelujah. I think I just had a warm fuzzy. I did. I think, I think, it's, I think it's coming back. I know. That's not a feeling. A warm fuzzy is not a feeling. Uh, a warm fuzzy is when uh, your fire gets lit. And just what I said when I finished there. You have to embrace that as reality. You don't have a life without him. And that's not something that you, you should not want to vocalize and make yourself continually aware. He is my life. I mean, we know it according to the Bible. We know it according to the Word. He is our life. And He is the length of our days. But it's quite different to know the verse. The address of the verse. Versus it being part of you. He's my life. I mean, what a blessing. To not just have God as your Father. He's your life. Everything else, everything else, if you'll get to this place, everything else pales in comparison. The best of anything pales in comparison. The best marriage, the best friendship, the best children, the best family, the best job, the best business, the best whatever pales in comparison to that life. He is our life. We had our origin in Him. We had our reconnection because of Him. It's always been the Creator's will that we be close. That we be close. That we have this affinity and love and devotion to Him that causes every other relationship look like it's disjointed. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, without him, you're nothing. That's right. That's right. Without him, you're nothing. I mean, I don't know how in the world mankind ever got to thinking so much of themselves. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, you talk about self-deception. For people to come to a place that they had anything to offer God is ludicrous. I mean, if you just stop and think about it a minute. I mean, because of everything, everything that we're capable of is because of Him. Everything. I mean, for us physically and naturally to have been created in such a way that we can navigate this life. Just think about your eyes. Just think about your hands. Think about your feet. Think about every area of your... God's into details. He's detailed. He didn't start and just say, well, whatever. (laughs) Can you imagine if he'd made a whatever out of you? I mean, you worked hard enough to make a whatever out of yourself. But his design for you was 
perfect. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He covered every detail. Yeah. I think about the crack in the little, in the little picture there. <laughs> every detail. Isn't that amazing? I mean, aren't you glad that, that you go from a place you don't have to see? You don't have to look at it when you clean it. Come on now. Do you think that God did anything in creating our bodies that he didn't think about? That isn't perfect? (laughs) I mean, I know most people wouldn't expect a preacher to bring it up, but that's just the way it is. God's every little detail. I mean, it's amazing. You're amazing. Turn to the person next to you and say, you're amazing. You're amazing. I think the Bible even talks about you being created. I think the Bible says something about you being fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, that wasn't God bragging. (laughs) Every good and perfect gift came from him. And you're one of them. And you're one of them. And I don't know whether it's my age or what it is, but I'm just beginning to realize how, you think that's what it is? How valuable. (laughs) It almost takes one to know one. You just have to come to a place where you kind of do some reflecting. And you begin to assay things, no pun intended. <laughs> you begin to evaluate things. And all of a sudden, you just you begin to realize, foot, look at us. Yet, what we see is not even the most valuable part of us. Because first and foremost, we're spiritual beings. It's our spirit man that was created in the image of God. Again, he did all the natural stuff right because he knew what it was going to look like, you know? He knew how it was going to work. Pretty fabulous our God is. Yeah. Yes. Amen. But I'm almost to the point where I'm beginning to realize until you have... a pretty decent understanding of your irrelevance without him. Now, the Bible makes it clear that, that uh, he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But he's not going to have a wake. He and Jesus aren't going to have a cry out. Because he's made a way for everybody to avoid eternal death. Why does nobody ever entertain the thought that because of how they were created, they're able to function and to be productive? And to be an asset to the world around him. Why do, why do, we, ever, why do we ever think we got that at, uh, you know, through middle school? Or through high school or through college? I mean, those things are wo- wonderful, but, that, but uh, that doesn't deal with your relationship with him. I mean, I believe everybody ought to read. And I believe they ought to read well. And I believe they ought to enjoy reading. I believe everybody ought to be able to punctuate a little bit. And then if they're like me, because he probably fudged a little bit during those tests, he's sure that he's got people around him that know how to punctuate properly. I believe everybody ought to be able to add a pretty good amount in their head. I still believe it's valuable just to be able to add and subtract. 
And obviously, early on in education, that was a big deal. And then sometimes when I begin to reflect on what they were able to do during biblical times, what they were able to build, how they were able to move humongous objects, just do all kinds of things, I'm thinking, well, well, you know, just because we can make a machine for it. Hmm? It makes you realize. It makes you realize that because of him, because of him, we can accomplish great things. And only in him. So anyway, I appreciate you sharing this moment with me uh, this morning. Uh, this understanding for me personally that uh, that connection with him is uh, the main thing. Yes. You know, a, a connection where uh, you can find yourself stopping occasionally, just kind of closing things out around you. Not when you're supposed to be doing something else, but for someone else. But just to be sure that you have time set aside where you just, you just reflect on the main thing. Hmm? Because listen, uh, in a very short period of time, uh, you're going to find yourself with him for the rest of eternity. And I have a sneaking suspicion that it will be good for us to be somewhat accustomed to being in his presence. I don't know how it's going to work, obviously. But he's going to be the main thing. His ways, his plans, his direction. And I think all he's really wanted over the years is for us to be willing and obedient to honor him in this life. I really think that's the hang up on us enjoying the things that belong to us in this life is endeavoring to take his place. Endeavoring to not realize that as Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. But because of you're not spending any time with him, you actually see yourself as accomplishing things even knowing that you don't spend any time with him. So you end up deceiving yourself into thinking that what you do is valuable even though what you're doing wasn't anything he asked you to do. And because it will generate resources, because it puts trust in you in a direction other than with him, It keeps you from knowing how big him is. And you know, you can can have a very productive life naturally without him interfering. And we can talk about that in two ways. He's not going to interrupt your plan. He's not going to bless your plan. But something else, something else, he is, not gonna, he is not going to do for you what only you can do. You can go about your business, do whatever you want to do. You can also have a great whatever you're involved in. And he wants you to. His presence should be over all over everything we do. His presence in our workplace, in our marriage, in our whatever we do should be enhanced by him being right there with us. If Jesus was telling the truth, and we know he was because he is, without me you can do nothing. You can't be a good anything without him being the author. 
we have to see him as our blueprint for everything. I think about how good he was at whatever he did, if it was carpentry or whatever he did, for 30 years. I mean, I still think that's pretty amazing. I mean, I wonder if it might have made a bigger impact if he had started at about eight or nine. But the thing is, their system wouldn't have gone for it. He had to get some days under his robe. And just think about that relationship between he and the father. I don't do anything. I don't say anything unless I hear the father say it or see him do it. Matter of fact, it's it's the father in me that does what I do. See, that should make anyone that's a, a ministry gift realize that they don't have anything to offer but a vessel. But someone that says, you know, to hell with me and to heaven with you. And then just allow the word to consume them. And then, of course, that relationship will get to a point where the vessel will do a better job of getting out of the way. You know, there are supernatural things that I believe God still wants to do in this body. But the chances of those things happening would be slim and none. And you can cross out slim if I wasn't the least bit receptive to those things. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of just like having just said that. Because in order for you and I to have the fullness of what God wants for us, I can't be ashamed of the gospel. I have to trust what I believe he tells me and what he tells me to do. And then I need to do what needs to be done. Well, I'm just growing. Just, you know, just believe God with me. I'll get every one of my days in health and vigor. And uh, we'll see God's hand on our house, which is our people. And them living a relationship with him that revolutionizes there all the time. They're all the time. Which means all the time. We come to a position where We're constantly aware. You know, Jesus had to be constantly prayer. I believe, now he was a man, you know that, don't you? He was made in the likeness of a man. He took on flesh. He did man stuff. He did man stuff. And he is the one that we should parrot. How he saw things. We shouldn't reduce it to some Mickey Mouse, optional, whatever. That somebody that really didn't even know him said. Or some denomination or some organization that poo-poos everything that the Word of God says. Or they say something really crazy like, you know, that's not relevant today. No, what's irrelevant is you. Because the only thing that is relevant today is his word. It always has been and it always will be the plumb line for life. It contains what everyone is missing in whatever area it is. It's been elevated above his name, his word. You know, I want to be able to understand that fine line the fine line the fine line is not if God's word will work the fine line is are we willing 
to step over that line. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. If the word says it, then faith just does it with no concern about the results. I mean, that's crazy right. That's God's plan A. Is that word become so much a part of us that that finishes us in that area? If the word says this, then that's what we do. We don't seek options. We just do what the word says. Now you do realize that as we hear this, I'm hearing this also. And just like it might put the squeeze on you, it puts the squeeze on me. But let's think about it this way. It's not my word. It's his word. It's his word. So the only squeeze on me is me having to be totally open and excited about sharing it. It's not mine to make happen. It's mine to share. As a matter of fact, I could share it and not even walk in it myself. But I believe what would please our Father is that we take him at his word. We not look for people who have different opinions. Because that's what the church world is full of. Opinions. As far as God's concerned, everything start, stops, starts and stops with his opinion. He has not really needed any addendums to his book. Now, I believe there have been good, good things written that help point us. I don't believe you have to reinvent the wheel. But I think when you take the spokes out, you're probably not going to have the same results. And the same results will never be expected. You keep all the spokes in. And even though they're far too copious for the dimension of your comprehension, you don't not do what the Word tells you to do. Because you will never have Word results if you remove a spoke. Matter of fact, you're going to assure failure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to preach for about a week and a half right now. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. God's really something, I'm telling you. I'm so grateful that He's our God. I'm so grateful that our God is God. Amen. We almost know what I'm going to say sometimes, don't we? I know. I know. I like that. So good, though. It's so good to know how God feels about things. And he's not much into feelings. But God has a plan. And he's allowed us to be part of the plan. Just think about that. There's another life coming. This stuff's just, there's another life coming. We, have, we, we don't have any clue how amazing that's going to be. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a major student about, um, uh, about heaven. I'm not, you know, because, you know, I feel like if I can get this right here, you know, that everything else after this is going to be cake. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, if I get corrected for that, you know, there's a good chance I will be because I'm really, I'm really kind of focused on what's supposed to happen here. Huh? Yeah, what's supposed to happen here? 
Lives are changing today yes. in this place. Yes. Hearts are going to make a shift. And every time we shift on his behalf, things get better. You can get delivered right now just by allowing him to be who he wants to be in your life. He can take paranoia out of your life. He can take depression out of your life. He can totally obliterate guilt and shame. If you'll let him be what he needs to be in your life. There's a heaven coming. But he wanted us to see it in this life. Not just believe that it was coming, but experience it in this life. He wanted his children to enjoy the fullness of his son's accomplishments. What if, what if we became more serious about our focus on him? What if our children saw in us a hunger, a a crazy affection for the things of God, yet they saw us navigating a natural life in a productive, supernatural way. Oh, they were talked about behind their back. And the kids themselves were made fun of. But they realized something in their family, something in their life, projected a dynamic that they didn't see in many places. What if just not being serious is the big deal? See, immediately our mind will gravitate to, well, you know, we've only got so much time in a day. He's actually deserving of all of it. He's not even asking you for all of it, but he's actually deserving of all your time, all your energy all your resources, all your focus. He doesn't ask for that. But you know what happens if you give him what he asks? All the rest of that part of your life. All the rest of your life becomes exactly as he would have it be. You name the relationship. It would be permeated with the hand of God. You know, they used to talk about... uh, They used to talk about uh, uh, a lot of the cults. You know, the Jim Jones guy, and, you know, that was... many, Many of you don't even know about him, but he found him. You know, I've been looking for that same crowd of people now. That, that he was able to amass ever since that happened. Because I'm a nice guy, I don't think I'm Jesus. I don't think I'm anybody's Messiah. But I'm looking for the same people that he had. Because they followed him as someone who was looking for what the man said he had. But see, no man has what only God has. So the only thing a man has to do that knows that is just let people know what God has. And it's always been God's design that each and every one of us recognize that death and life, blessing and cursing, 
was set before each of us. And that ultimately, we must choose life. Which means we must choose him. But, we, but, but, but because we, we, we don't talk about it as seriously, or we don't have somebody that will, you know, look into your eyes and say, listen, this is, a, this is absolutely the way it is. Now, do you want it this way? Do you have time for him? Are you willing to put your life on the line for his life? Because that's what he's offering in exchange. So, Pastor, what if that's not true? It is true. Jesus said it. Unless you lay down your life for me, you won't have a life. But if you do, you will. And what we've already talked about, knowing that the Father is our life in the length of our days. I'm just saying, what this is doing for me, it's making me more receptive to all that he's provided for me. Knowing that I will not produce the provision But I can receive the provision when I begin to see him as he really is. He is El Shaddai. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Nisi. And on the line, down the line, he is everything that any of us need at any given time. Because he encompasses life. His life is life. So you got to stop thinking about your life as being your intellect, your level of education. You just have to take time. Isn't that what we're doing? We're just taking time. We're just kind of putting our heart on something. And our mind is saying, you know, what am I doing here? I'll tell you what you're doing. You're exposing yourself to the life of God. God is a spirit. His word is spirit. He's able to implant in you himself and his ability in you to embrace everything that belongs to you. What does the word say about itself? It's life. Right. Yeah. Healing. Yes. Health. Medicine. Right. To all your flesh. Yes. What is? The word. The word. The word. Wow. I'm telling you what it does for me. It makes my job easy. Makes my job easy. Look at this. Now, I believe I said what I said while I go by the Spirit of God. I believe there's some of you in here. This uh, has been and will continue to be a defining moment in your life. If it'll make you any more comfortable, it has been for me too. A defining moment. We should never be concerned or apprehensive when God begins to move in our life. When he begins to reveal to you things that make you more confident about his presence and about his love and about his devotion. That's a great thing. Because he's looking for men and women who are actually genuine in their faith. That understand their possibilities that can never can never be realized. 
without a close relationship. And let me help you with one more thing, then I'm going to close maybe. He doesn't want to hold anything back. He doesn't want to hold anything back from those who are willing just to simply receive. Simply receive. Remember, he's a spirit. His word is spirit. The you and I that's valuable is spirit. And because of that, the life that we're talking about is spirit. So it's because it has not been elevated to the place where it belongs, this spiritual relationship, this embracing the word which is spirit. We haven't enjoyed what it will change naturally. If it is the word, it is health, it is medicine. Then without that word being the word, I said without that word being the word, then it will never be the right prescription. And we make that decision. And then we get an opportunity to go as far as we want to as far as we want to. It's the willing and the obedient that eat the good of the land.